Hey, how's it going? It's Carl, aka Carl Drum Tech, and I'm here right now at my place of residence uh, with a special guest here. His name is Nacho. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, one of my uh, new students. Uh, I got a new student for private lessons, and uh, this is a guy who has already marched impulse, uh, playing cymbals, and uh, he, you know, was probably good enough to make a spot in one of the drum corps. And um, you know, just uh, for whatever reason, just it didn't pan out. So he seeked out my guidance because he, since he wasn't going to be marching this year, that uh, he would consult me to see if I could help him out in terms of you know getting him some pointers to get better, and at the same time, you know, keep him drumming, keep him uh, motivated, and uh, keep him focused in terms of how, what he needs to do to get better, so that he can take take it to the next level and make the next group that he auditions for next year so um it was a very good uh productive first lesson that we had it was you know it's always exciting for me whenever i get a new student a new private student to teach them how to play drums but you know it's not often that you know i get somebody who's really experienced a lot of times i get students who are you know who have no experience whatsoever have never played drums or you know just like you know they're just seventh or sixth graders and you know in school and uh you know they're not experienced at all when it comes to drumming but you know this person this individual in particular you know definitely has some skills uh, definitely has some experience you know and like i said you know he already marched a, a year of drum corps so you know he has that under his belt so that counts for something absolutely so um but you know he plays snare at his high school and he's going to be a junior next year so uh, I assess his talent I assess you know where he's at and uh, you know there's definitely some things that he does well but there's also some things you know that I felt like you know he could do better and you know I was able to point those out to him uh, most notably you know the issue was just you know in terms of just like you know like a bucks exercise like you know right and then like keeping the feet in time and, and you know uh, being able to stay on step with that exercise you know, and be able to mark time and do that proficiently. So he had some issues doing that, and he had some issues, especially when we slowed it down, you know, because obviously when you slow things down, you know, and it, you know, here's a tip, right? If you're having trouble playing, with some, playing something, definitely take the time to really slow it down, play it really slow. You, what's, your, what's gonna happen is you're gonna expose exactly what it is you need to work on, because what's gonna happen is whatever error you're making, it's exposed like so greatly because there's so much space in between the notes that you know if you have any hesitancy, if you have anything you know in terms of you're not comfortable with in terms of where your feet come down with the beat, it's gonna be clearly obvious that you don't know where to put your foot down, right? But if you are you know playing it super fast, you, know, you can kind of move your feet kind of in time and just things kind of just like fall into place as long as you know that you know the left foot falls on one on every bar. So you can kind of get away with things and kind of make, kind of hide things and mask things that may not be obvious to you in terms of like what you're what you could be doing better and the same thing for the audience and this goes for like you know tap heights this goes for interpretation this goes for you know uh just overall like your sound quality there's so many things uh that can be missed just by kind of like repping things really fast like there you go boom and then it's like what happened i don't know <laughs> it just played it really fast so but when you take the time to slow things down it really exposes you know what exactly you are weak at so what the point of this video is that you know when uh, we slowed it down for the student you know and it was clear that he was having issues we would just exactly what I was talking about in terms of putting his foot down where it needs to go um, and you know in terms of just taking it down slowing it down and then you can see that you know he's struggling with it you know he had this he had these moments where he's just like you know oh you know sorry like you know I just you know I don't uh, I just need to work on it more or you know oh, I'm sorry you know just like maybe the stand is too low or so this is just like you know these things where I'm reading this person I'm trying to see like you know what if you're having issues with something if if you know if this is a weak part of your drumming game like you should be happy about that right like it's for me I know I was happy because it's like cool we were able to identify exactly what it is that you need to work on so you can get better because that's the whole point of taking lessons and practicing and, and, and all that stuff is to get better. You want to identify the things you're weak at and you want to address them and you want to take care of it and those are those are the uh, things you want to attack so that you can improve and get better as a player. But for this individual and I'm sure for a lot of you guys this happens all the time where it's like you know you're, you get in front of somebody you know who you've never met before maybe it's a new instructor or something like that maybe you go to an audition or something like that and you play for somebody you play for the staff 
and uh, you are struggling with something, it's it can be extremely embarrassing. It can be extremely nerve wracking, and quite frankly, it could be just a, a point of you know insecurity for you. But what I'm trying to say is, you know, the other way to look at it is that you got to be happy that you can see that you know you you have identified exactly what it is you need to get better at. Let's take an example of me. You know, like uh, you know when I auditioned for the Madison Scouts. Um, there's probably like 25 people who auditioned for the tenor spot and for a couple of tenor spots actually and uh, you know, at the end of the day you know the guy uh, who was auditioning tenors he said you know you're definitely in my top six in terms of you know for people who to, uh, to make quads he only took three <laughs> and uh, I was not one of the people who made the three spots that were available and you know I said so what you know what's the deal like what's you know what, what held me back and he said well you do have a healthy slice and I'm like, okay, is there anything else? And he's like, oh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, you know, at that level, it's like, you know, they, they, when there's so many people who are auditioning and so many people trying out, any little minute thing that, you know, that there's a flaw, you know, they, that, that can definitely count against you. And I'm not saying that, you know, slicing is like, you know, something minor, but at the same time, you know, there's just that one thing. And it's like, you know, I could definitely be feel embarrassed about it. And, you know, in some ways I was, you know, I was definitely embarrassed by, you know, the fact that, you know, I had, did have this flaw. You know, in some ways I was even mad at my instructor for not showing, telling me that I slice and how to fix it. And, uh, you know, but at the same time, you know, I got to be happy about it in retrospect because, you know, the, that very night where I got cut, you know, I was in the bathroom of my hotel room because, you know, I'm from California. It was, you know, Madison Scouts. This is from Madison, Wisconsin. So I was, you know, in my hotel room and I was just working on that slice the, the rest of the night. I don't know what time I slept. It was probably late. But, you know, I addressed that issue and then I never had an issue with my left hand slicing ever again. Maybe it still slices once in a while. But, you know, it's like, it's definitely infinitely better than what it was. Because when I first saw it playing in the mirror, it's like, holy crap, that is really bad. And then once I worked on it, it improved dramatically. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like you look at it as a pro and a con. You know, the con is I didn't make Madison Scouts. Oh, well, right? But the good thing is I was able to identify something that I was weak at. And then I worked on it and I got better at it. And I'm a better drummer and percussionist because of it. So, you know, that's the moral. That's that's what I try to tell, teach my students is like, you know, if you are struggling with something, if you are having trouble with something, you know, like, don't be embarrassed about it. Don't be insecure about it. Like, you got to be happy that it's like it got put out there in the open and like now you know exactly what it is that you need to work on. Yeah, it could be embarrassing if you're out there in an audition setting. Maybe, you know, it's like you, you do the down the line kind of thing, right? Where it's like everybody plays individually by themselves in front of everybody, right? Not just the staff, but everybody else who's auditioning. And if you suck at something, obviously that could be really, um, it could be a moment of insecurity for you. But the thing is like, you know, you have to look at it another way, right? First of all, do your best. First of all, execute to the best of your ability. And you know, if it falls a little bit short and you're struggling with something, oh well, Make, like consider it as something that, consider it a good thing that now you know what you need to focus on and what you need to work on and attack it and, and work on it so that you can get better at it and you will be a much better player overall so um, hopefully this video has been helpful to you in terms of my recent experience with uh, teaching a private student let me know in the comments below what you know have you guys been in a situation where you were in a uh, you were playing something in front of people and then like let's say you just basically have yourself and you just like you just fall apart or like you know you just are struggling in front of everybody and was it a moment of you know frustration was it a moment of you know um, of insecurity for you what did you feel and how do you think you know do you think it would be better for you if you had that moment where you just went oh now i know what i need to work on so uh leave it in the comments below and if you have any questions of course please leave that in the comments as well and as always if you like this video please like this video and uh share it uh with people who you think uh could benefit from watching this video and of course if you haven't already subscribed Please make sure you subscribe and uh, I will see you guys on the next video. Peace out. See you guys next time. All right, I'm back and uh, Nacho's back too. And um, so somebody had asked me, you know, can you do a breakdown of the match grip? Um, we have, I've definitely done some breakdowns on the traditional grip and I'm sure there's a lot of videos out there that, you know, describe that. But, you know, what about the actual match grip? So if you're a, a snare player and you play traditional grip, you still need to know the match grip because you use that on your right hand. And if you're, you know, 
if you play any other percussion instrument, most likely you're playing with a mash grip on both hands. So let's break that down really quick for those of you guys who really uh, want a breakdown of how to play mash grip. And if you already know how, maybe you know you can kind of confirm what you already know. Maybe you learn something new. Either way, hopefully you will benefit from this quick little vid. So. All right, so we have our stick here, all right? And what you, what you basically what happens is the stick is going to pivot around your second finger, okay? It's gonna be around like, you know, your first knuckle that you wanna kinda of set it at, and basically the stick is gonna move like this, okay? Here's your fulcrum, right? And then it's gonna move like this. You wanna find uh, a point where it's gonna bounce the most for you, all right? Uh, if you put your stick on your finger like this, you wanna put it in the point where it's gonna bounce the most, right, if you let it go like that. Okay, so if it's up here, you're not gonna get much. If it's like back here, same thing. But there's gonna be a point where it's like maybe around here, if you have a Vic first stick, it's gonna be like around where the flag is. Sorry, it's gonna bounce a lot more. Um, sorry, I don't have a, a drum to kind of show that. But um, so yes, so find that point, find that spot. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the thumb right above where the second finger is, okay? So you're gonna hold that tight, all right? Not too tight, but you know, hold it, you know, firmly. And then, we're, and then I like to do uh, a technique where basically you don't have a space here between the first finger and the second finger. I just like to have that closed. A lot of people kind of, you know, might have that open. But I just feel like, you know, for control and like keeping the stick where it's supposed to be, I like to just, you know, emphasize the squeeze. And, you know, that, and that mentality is helped by not having space between the first finger and the second finger. So what's going to happen is now the back end of the stick is going to be around this part where it's like, you know, you have a meaty part of your hand here and then you have another meaty part here. It's gonna be kind of in between that, all right? So it's gonna be kind of more on the outside meaty part, but for the most part, it's kind of in between those two meaty parts of your hand, all right? So then the rest of it is you're going to wrap the rest of your fingers around like this, okay? And then what you're gonna do is uh, you can either, do a French grip, right, which is like, you know, thumb is pointed straight up, or you can have a really flat grip, which I don't really recommend, but it's going to be a little bit in between. So it's like not exactly flat, but it's not exactly a French grip, but it's going to be a little bit in between. So you want to think of the thumb pointing out in a diagonal rather than to the side or straight up. So in between like that. All right. So hopefully you found that video helpful and uh, that's how you play match grip. And uh, thanks for watching.